When you unite male and female into one, then you will enter into the kingdom. Humanity left Eden as a couple, and as a couple they must return. This is illustrated in the ancient acknowledgement of the need for both priest and priestess, the couple that must work together in order to reach perfection. Couples that conquer the desire to eat the fruit of knowledge internally gather up all of that energy. And gradually that energy can be used to create something within. Rather than feeding their own lust, they can restore their own inner Eve, the fallen serpent. And from there, they may then raise the serpent of the Kundalini. They can illuminate the tree of life, which exists within the human body, the spinal column. And they can create divine light within themselves and return to the direct knowledge of their own inner God. This is why all of the world's great religions emphasize chastity. Chastity does not mean abstention from sex. It means abstention from the orgasm, from spilling the divine energy that is the Holy Spirit. The sexual act performed in the usual way may give a slight notion of the nature of this higher consciousness. But more than that, it cannot do, since the energy, instead of being trapped and put into use, is expended, creating a new physical body instead of spiritual consciousness. Sex is not only important for spiritual advancement, it is a necessity. It is through sexual energy that the vehicle of the human soul is born. This is what is meant when the biblical Jesus explains to Nicodemus that he must be born again. Unless a man be born again of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. He must give birth internally to his soul from the water and the Holy Spirit. With patience ye shall possess thy souls. Jesus of Nazareth never said that the soul already exists within a man. Instead, he said it must be born of the water and the Spirit. In all of creation, everything is born of sex. Thus, the soul, the fiery chariot of heaven, must also be born of sex. The soul must be born within a person, born of the waters of sex and the fire of the Spirit. When Jesus met the Samaritan woman at the well, he told her of a water that gives eternal life. Whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water, that I may not thirst, nor come hither to draw. Jesus saith to her, Go, call thy husband, and come hither. He was prepared to tell her the secret of alchemy, the great arcanum. That secret, allegorized in countless ancient stories, is that the waters of eternal life, the fountain of youth, is developed between husband and wife in chastity. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. In that saidst thou truly. She was not faithful to one man, and thus she was not prepared to receive the true teaching. But a man who commits adultery lacks judgment. Whoever does so destroys himself. Man and wife, through immaculate sexuality and the grace of God, create the Savior, the Christic fire. The containment and transmutation of the potent sexual energy can restore the fallen serpent of Eve, 
From there, the fire of the Holy Spirit can be awakened, raising the serpent upon the staff. This is the Kundalini, the positive, life-giving serpent. It can only be awakened through chastity and only by husband and wife. A single person cannot awaken the Kundalini. The fire of the sexual energy must create or it will destroy. This very potent energy cannot be contained and if repressed will seek expression destructively, internally through the mind, through anger or through sexual degeneration. This is evidenced by the infamous perversions of priests around the world in all religions and the rampant fanaticism that has destroyed so many spiritual movements. In order to utilize the sexual energy effectively, it must be transmuted into spiritual energy. This is accomplished by connecting sexually with the spouse without spilling the energy through the orgasm. Or if one is single, learning to control the energy through ancient methods long forgotten by contemporary priests in the Western traditions. No one whose testes are crushed or whose member is cut off shall be admitted into the congregation of Jehovah. Entrance back into Eden, the congregation of the Lord, is through the proper use of sexuality. Likewise, the entrance into suffering and pain is through the improper use of sexuality. The great arcanum is the secret knowledge of Tantra. There are three types of Tantrism, black, gray, and white. Stimulation of sexual sensation and identification with lust is black Tantra. Any school or religion that teaches how to awaken the consciousness through having the orgasm is teaching Black Tantra. Black Tantra is responsible for all of the suffering of humanity. Gray Tantra teaches that one should only orgasm occasionally. This teaching inevitably leads one to Black Tantra. White Tantra always teaches three factors, the elimination of desire, the creation of the soul, and sacrifice for others. All White Tantra teaches to renounce the orgasm. White Tantra, the elimination of desire, is the road back to Eden. Mankind must return to Eden through the same door it exited, through sexuality. Mankind must return to the state of purity and innocence it once had in order to transcend suffering and pain. This is the great secret knowledge of alchemy, the chemistry of God. White Tantra, the path of sanctity and chastity, frees the consciousness from the ego, awakening the pristine consciousness, free of all animal desire. Black Tantra, the path of identification and fornication, awakens the consciousness that is trapped in the ego, leaving the soul trapped in suffering. To acquire true spiritual awakening, it is necessary to defy the tempting serpent and raise the fire of the Holy Spirit to create the human soul. This is the key to the ancient mystery of alchemy, to transmute the lead of the ego and desire into the spiritual gold of the consciousness. It is necessary to transcend the mind and awaken the consciousness. Light is necessary to see through the darkness. In order to incarnate light, it is mandatory to transcend the animal desires that fill the mind. Therefore, one must understand and act upon the mystery of Adam and Eve.